what began as a, an ordinary traffic stop turned into a horrific and tragic discovery uh, in the town of Weymouth early this morning. Around 1.28 a.m. on Washington Street, a Weymouth police officer observed a vehicle going at a high rate of speed. Uh, that vehicle stopped, the officer exited his car, but at that point the suspect began to get back in the car, flee, and, and flee at a high rate of speed. Uh, a chase ensued. Uh, the towns of Braintree and Quincy were notified. As the chase ensued, uh, the car struck a cab. At that point, the suspect in this case exited his vehicle and began to flee on foot. The officer uh, whose diligence prompted the initial uh, stop uh, also was a canine officer and released his dog at that point. Uh, the suspect was apprehended and he was arrested and charged uh, with various motor vehicle violations and with assault with a dangerous weapon. That assault uh, charge uh, on a police officer since the uh, suspect was wielding a knife. After the suspect was arrested, there began a, a routine inventory search of the vehicle. And during the course of the inventory search of the vehicle, uh, there was a horrific discovery of the dead body of a seven-year-old girl in the backseat of that vehicle. The ongoing investigation uh, has revealed that this was not a random act, so the public should not feel any particular concern themselves. There's no reason to think the public as a whole is in danger. And we also learned that the victim in this case, the seven-year-old girl, uh, was last seen at a sleepover at a relative's home. And evidence has led us to conclude that she was removed from that home during the night, unbeknownst to the adult in that home, and then abducted from that home, removed from that home, uh, and unfortunately was last found dead in the back seat of that vehicle. There is a suspect that has been uh, under arrest. His name is Ryan Boyce. He's 20 years old. He's no address. He's homeless. He's under arrest, but he's at currently at South Shore Hospital. He'll be arraigned tomorrow in Quincy District Court on the charges I've mentioned before, as well as the charges of first degree murder. This we have now uh, leads us to conclude that the person knew uh, of the uh, victim. It wasn't just a, a case where uh, the suspect or whoever perpetrated this, uh, the suspect had gone uh, to any random house along the street. So the public shouldn't feel, uh, in the absence of a connection, that there's any problem. Uh, from the evidence, uh, it's clear there was trauma, uh, and uh, it's clear it was a homicide. Uh, it wasn't the suspect's car. The suspect had stolen a car in the course of determining the owner of that car, uh, doing good police work, uh, they were able to go back, and, and uh, that's the process that began the uh, horrific discovery that, uh, indeed, uh, this girl had been uh, removed from the home, uh, that she had a sleepover uh, with a family member, and uh, was later killed. Around 5.30, a woman came to the window. We asked her what happened, and she said that she worked for the cab company. There was a cab involved in the accident. She needed to um, come down because her cab driver was in the hospital. And um, she told us that the, the guy who had hit, the driver who had hit the cab was involved in a high-speed chase from Weymouth to Braintree, then to Quincy, and then he got out of the car and ran towards the mental hospital and they, uh, the police ended up catching him 
and they found in the car um, a young girl wrapped up in a blanket and she was not alive. They tried to revive her, didn't happen.